what I want to invite you to here in this, also saying like, I, I don't know if things are going well, but we can learn from history, from innovation theory, especially what it has to offer. So let's let's go. Let's open the big curtain again of you know technological revolution since the beginning of humankind. And we had several here where, where we transformed matter, we transformed energy, and now we're in this meta paradigm where we transform uh, information. And let's pick one. Let's pick the one with the water. Maybe the first what they call industrial revolutions. We used a machine in order to start to dominate energy. Well, it came with steam and with electricity, became better and better at it, but that kind of like was one of the beginnings. So there were several civilizations that really were thriving on that. Now, what they were doing, these civilizations, is they used what Hayek, very influential economist, he wrote this very interesting essay, The Use of Knowledge in Society. Highly recommend it. It's very readable. And what Hayek says, that well, this is what these civilizations did. That's what always happens. Civilization advances by extending the number of important operations which, can, which we can perform without thinking about them. So what were these civilizations performing without thinking about them? So there's two of them ancient, very famous civilizations, the Khmer in what is today Thailand and Cambodia, and uh, the Incas in what is today is mainly is Peru. Two different sides of the world, but they were both agricultural societies. So most of the people there were employed basically in carrying buckets of water to water the rice fields. So they had to go to the river, take the buckets of water and carry them back. And that was basically, I mean, I'm simplifying now, but that was the main uh, employment. So what they both did, what was the big innovation is they automated the process. They create what the, the Khmer called the barayas, what the Incas called aqueductus. So they created this machinery that automated this process. Civilization advances by extending the number of important operations, which can, which we can perform without thinking about them. So they basically, with that, made the majority of the people obsolete from dusk till dawn because basically people were carrying bucket of water all their life. So what did they do then? Well, they had a lot of free time on their hand, a lot of free time on their hand. Now, what did they do with the free time? Well, the similar conversation that we have nowadays, what are we gonna do when you're all in, um, unemployed with universal income and so forth? But you know, these things, I'm telling these stories because these things happened before and innovation theory can help us to see you know, what happened. So what happened then? When they were suddenly all from dusk till dawn unemployed, well, they had a lot of free time on their hand and didn't know really what to do with it. So some of them, they were so bored, they started to like look at the skies. And what came of it is astronomy, or also astrology. <laughs> but they started to make a science of, of looking, looking at the stars. Others, they were so bored and sort of only like building caves and living in huts, they started to build what until today is the biggest architectural structures that we, that we have. Angkor Wat is until nowadays, the biggest that's a construction that the Khmer's did in, in nowadays is Cambodia. The biggest construction I think that was ever built. At Machu Picchu, amazing constructions. I mean, you have to have a lot of free time on your hand to push architecture to such limits that actually we never repeated until now. Um, other things, the Incas started to invent written language. They had these, these keepers, these knots, this knot system that they used for recording. And therefore, with written language, inventing literature and whatever came of it, uh, poetry and so forth. Others, they were so bored, they started to organize standing armies and attack neighboring civilizations. I mean, you have to be very bored to come up with stuff like that. <laughs> so, so, but that's how civilization advances, basically. So we create, we create, you know, this freedom in time that we don't use anymore. In that time, it was, we liberated ourselves from a lot of manual labor, right? And that, that created a surplus of free time uh, of what we can then do other things. Now, this one here is a little bit different. We're liberating ourselves from a lot of cognitive labor. And that will also very likely give us a lot of free time.